Hi guys, um, welcome back to a new week of e-learning. We are going to start working on our personal logo design project. So I thought I would give you some um, background knowledge on how logo design works and the different types of logos um, that are used around the world. So let's get started. First, what is a logo? A logo is a design or symbol adopted by an organization to identify its products or to just identify itself to its clientele or consumers. There are four different types of logos. The first type of logo is a word mark, and this simply means that it is the name of the organization or company um, just written out in a different font. Some of them are elaborate fonts like the Coca-Cola logo. Some of them are sans serif fonts like Google. And some of them are display fonts, which means they are they can be serifed or sans serifed. And um, they also display other characteristics that are unique to the font that is being used or unique to the organization, um, such as Samsung's logo. The next type of logo is a letter mark. In a letter mark logo, the organization or company chooses to only use certain letters of the whole name to represent itself. For instance, you have GMC. I would love to tell you what it stands for, but after all these years, I am still not sure what GMC stands for. Um, it is a motor company. Is it General Motor Company? Let's says Google. GMC stands for Really? I can't find it. Oh, that's terrible. I put GMS. GMC stands for General Motors, General Motors Company. Um, the next one it's, is Volkswagen. There's New Balance and there's PayPal. Um, and then, of course, there are other examples in this, but I'm just putting a few out there that you guys might recognize um, because they are pretty well known. The next one, and some of which you'll probably recognize the most of, are uh, brand marks. That means it is just a visual. There is no words. Um, there are no letters attached to it. There, there is nothing but the one um, image. Uh, I guess you could call it symbol, but it's not really a symbol. But it's just an image. It's just a visual. There is no actual letters attached to um, their logo. And there are many, many, many brand marks out there. Um, there are even some companies that will have both a brand mark and a letter mark or a brand mark and a combination logo, which we're going to talk about next. Um, the first one, which I think everyone will recognize, is Nike. Then you have Twitter, Target, of course, you have Instagram, you have Lululemon. Um, all of these are well-recognized uh, organizations or companies. And sometimes they will present itself just by the brand mark logo. And then other times you will have the brand mark accompanied by the name right next to the brand mark. For instance, whenever you see a Target sign, you'll usually see the bullseye. And then on the bottom, you'll see that it says Target. Next up, we have combination marks. Um, these are a combination of usually either a letter mark and a word mark and a, and um, a visual image, um, a brand mark. So for instance, you will have Domino's Pizza. You have the little domino piece. It's really clever. It's in a pizza box which is a really big square and then it has the name domino's pizza then you have burger king clearly the burger king is to is meant to be like the meat inside the burger 
and you have the bonds on the top and bottom. You have Adidas, which is a different type of combination mark. It has the symbol and then it has the name, but it is not um, all put into one like Burger King and Domino's are. All right. Now that you've uh, learned about the four different types of logos, we're going to talk about what the steps are to develop your own logo. You guys are going to be creating your personal logo, and you're going to have to choose whether you want to go with a word mark, a letter mark, a brand mark, or a combination mark. So the first step to develop your logo is to brainstorm. You can create a mood board for inspiration. What do you want the logo to represent? What style best represents the organization? In this case, what style best represents you? Then the next step in the brainstorming um, level is to evaluate the culture and the target audience. How will your logo be perceived by whoever looks at it. In some cultures, a logo might not be as welcome as others, depending on the imagery and what it represents in that culture. Same with the tar target audience. A logo that appeals to older um, people might not appeal to teenagers. So how will your logo be perceived by your peers? If you wanted to represent you, you wanted to represent you at this point in time. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but you want it to be something that will be well perceived by your peers. The next step is design. So the first sub step in the design um, stage is to use ideas from your brainstorming session or from your mood board to create thumbnail sketches. Usually thumbnail sketches are no bigger than um, two by two inches. They're usually pretty small um, and they just give you like a general idea of what the design is gonna look like before you actually work on it digitally. Um, now, in your case, you guys are going to be creating some more elaborate sketches because you might not have a good handle on how the design software works, and it might take you longer to do some things that you want to do or to figure out some things that you want to do for your logo that might not be addressed in the upcoming tutorials. So for your project, you will be creating some more detailed sketches but you'll still have to turn those into a digital product. Um, we will not go through as many ideas as you would see or as many changes to an ideas as you would see in an actual logo design process, and I'll go through that in a little bit as well. The next step is to sketch various designs and try not to make them all look alike. So in your case, you're going to be doing two separate sketches. Make sure they're not both letter marks or there's not like only a little bit of variance. They have to be very different so that you can have uh, two different paths to go on. If we want to see more from you or more from a certain idea, you won't just be stuck with the same design. The next uh, stage is to modify. You would present your logo ideas to the client. In this case, you're going to present them to us, to the class. Um, you're going to show us what your logo sketches are, and then we're going to give you feedback just as if we were in the classroom doing a class critique. Then you would make modifications based on the critique or feedback that we give you. So you show us both, both of your sketches and we give you feedback on what we think of those sketches and then you run with that feedback and you make changes to your design. The last step is to finalize your logo. Once the client, uh, once you've made final modifications to your design, you present those to the client as a finished product. Uh, sometimes that will happen, the modifications will happen in the sketch stage, and sometimes they will happen once you've already turned it into vector art, um, into digital artwork. And the client might ask you to make some changes, some more changes, or they might just be happy with the product that you're giving to them. Once you have completed that, you'll want to package the logo in a variety of formats. 
Now, this following uh, part of the presentation is just a sample of what a logo development process looks like. And I went back and tried to pull some of my old logo designs that I did for a client. And um, I just look for the initial ideas and then what the modifications were off of that. So I'll kind of walk you through what that looked like. Um, so you can have a better idea of what a real logo development process looks like. So initial ideas. First, I wouldn't have done this digitally. I initially sketched them. Um, but because this was a client whose branding I was already familiar with, um, I went ahead and went from sketch directly to digital, especially since I knew there weren't going to be as many changes. Um, as there can be. So the these were the first six ideas. Some of them are kind of similar, some are not. You can see that they have similar elements and that is because uh, the client had already given me a brief of what it is that they wanted to present or what they wanted the logo to represent. Um, so I already had a fairly good idea. I knew their branding. I knew their colors. I knew um, the fonts that they had purchased to use in all of their designs. Um, so I only played around with those and some other visual elements to make sure that the logo was something that could represent the product they were trying to create. Um, in the next stage, in the modified stage, they look back at those six uh, different sketches and then they said well we kind of like the one with the gear over here why don't you make um, two different versions of that or why don't you change this about it so instead of having the little eye um, this was capitalized but that was the only major change then there was this one let's go back so you have this one with the little light bulb they really like the light bulb so then they said well we like the light bulb but what about the gateway what about this tells us gateway so you know big kind of like uh st louis arch um to represent that gateway um and then there it was just a matter of making some very very simple changes some very slight variations just to make it maybe look more three-dimensional um, like adding the line uh, the shine to the light bulb which i don't believe is present in this this is much simpler and then you can kind of see here that you have some things to make it look like that eye has a little more depth and then here just uh, to give it that little shine um, two different types of uh, gateway Re visual representations going on here and in the end they decided they wanted to go with this one over here just because it looked a little bit more professional um, so in the end they still gave me some more feedback this is the last part of the modify stage they were like well we just really want these to fit within this certain space so the other designer drew some lines and said we want it placed exactly there and that's the only thing that i had to change about it um, so, you know, then it was final. I packaged the files. They received uh, packages that were in, I mean, files that were monochromatic, some that were in this two color, one that was just in the golden, another that was just in this blue color, um, and then another one that was with the background, without the background, and that was it. They didn't need any other arrangements. So, after that, they used it however they wanted, and then they sent me their magazine saying, hey, look, we use your logo. It's in this article right here. Um, so just as a review, your project will not be this extensive. Um, the first question, just to see whether you've understood um, the point of this presentation, is what is this logo an example of? During which step of the design do you present ideas to a client? What is this logo an example of? What is this logo an example of? Hopefully you'll all remember that. During which step of the design process do you create a mood board? And last, what is this logo an example of? Oh, one more question. 
How many modifications should you make to a logo? All right, guys, thank you for watching. Um, later this week, I will be posting a tutorial on how I go through my own